item. So thank you very much for this opportunity to talk in this uh, distinguished uh, conference. I, I will talk a little bit about, uh, from an economic perspective, but at a very high level, discuss uh, the trends uh, in merger enforcement uh, in both uh, the European, uh, for the European Commission and for the UK, because I'm based in the UK, so I'm more familiar with that. I think um, there is nothing revolutionary actually happening, but there has been in the last uh, perhaps eight, nine years a trend t towards a certain direction, which I will discuss. And so, um, my, uh, the purpose of this talk is to cover these main three aspects. Um, merger enforcement trends in the UK and, uh, and the European Commission. Uh, and basically, so what is this uh, more economic approach to merger control? What, what does it entail or what does it mean? Is it really a big difference or what is it bringing? And then finally, if I have time, perhaps not a lot of time, but maybe I'll just uh, touch on, on this, uh, I, I give an example of a type of merger in a, in a kind of market, in this kind of new markets, where you might use new economic uh, analysis and, and that type of approach. So an example of a more economic approach. So, um, a, a merger assessment has these main elements that I've put there in that slide, and these are basically the main elements everywhere. Um, so they are like the ingredients of the cake, but it may vary, vary the, the kind of uh, uh, proportions with which you, you use the, and you combine these ingredients. So for example, the main element of market definition uh, is something that uh, traditionally was, was given a lot of weight and a lot of effort by, by, the, side of, by, the, by, by the parties and by the competition authorities. Um, and I think gradually it's been recognized that it's not so worth doing so much effort in getting the right market definition because competitive constraints are more important. I think the UK authorities recognize this first, but I think that is a trend overall in this direction. Uh, and so, and the same thing goes for market shares, except for very extreme cases, there are other aspects, less uh, formalistic, that are <coughs> uh, gaining more importance. And these are competitive constraints. So it's more important to look at competitive constraints if you want to defend a merger, a merger that you think it's probably going to be problematic, rather than spending a lot of effort in the market definition and the calculation of the exact market shares. It's important to see, uh, to uncover competitive constraints, and this can be the possibility of entry, uh, supply substitution, demand elasticity, so saying that uh, your, uh, your consumers will be able to switch very easily if you raise prices. Uh, buyer power, you, have, you are selling to powerful buyers, so you cannot raise prices. So this, this type of arguments, I think, will, will bring you much further than, uh, than, a, than a, lot of, a lot of investment in very complicated economic techniques used for market definition. Then the other two elements are unilateral effects and coordinated effects. So unilateral effects are the incentives, so just a direct incentive that firms have to raise prices, and then once they merge, uh, there is an internalization of the externality of increasing prices, and so uh, there is a direct impact that uh, you have, uh, you, you gain more by raising prices than you did before you merge. So there's a direct effect. And then the coordinated effects are gaining uh, importance um, because uh, well, they are very difficult to analyze. So this is a, a, this is a, a very rich area for economics. Uh, but the, the idea of coordinated effects is that. Uh, after the merger, maybe it's easier in that market to implement tacit collusion. And so, uh, or collusion will just, will just happen naturally. And if that's the case, then this, is, this, this might be a reason to stop the merger. And so, uh, this is a big scope for, uh, there's a big scope here for using your economic imagination and, um, you know, come up with good reasons why tacit collusion would not work well in their market. And so there are a number of tests and a, no, a number of models to be used there. So, uh, and, and um, yes, and I will not talk uh, about efficiencies, but obviously uh, I think the, the impression overall is that efficiencies are gaining more weight by, by a number of these jurisdictions. So uh, the European Commission, even the UK, 
even though these things are, are done on a case-by-case -case basis, but they accept the notion that efficiencies, if they are very large, could be a reason to let a merger that is potentially problematic uh, go ahead. Efficiencies, however, are very difficult to prove because the burden of proof will be on the merging parties. So it's not, it's not only that you need to prove that there will be efficiencies, which perhaps in itself might not be so complicated, but you have to prove uh, exactly that these efficiencies will, ben will benefit consumers directly. So these, these gains will be passed, for, pass, passed forward for, to final consumers. Otherwise, you will not get the, get the benefit uh, from these efficiencies. And these have to be compared to the cost. So even though there is a scope for efficiencies to, to be used as an argument, it's a, difficult, uh, it's a difficult burden of proof. It's a higher level of, of perception. And remedies, uh, of course, they are accepted in general. Um, remedies are accepted. All the authorities prefer structural remedies. Some authorities will say that uh, we don't even consider or we don't like to consider behavioral remedies. But uh, as Cathy will discuss, um, uh, th th there is a trend that perhaps on a case-by-case -case basis, authorities are in fact uh, accepting behavioral remedies more and more. So I think I've, uh, as, as, I've, I've uh, as I said in my first slide, I, I said already a lot of, of the things uh, that are coming in the, in the next few slides, so I'll be shorter now. Uh, the new guidelines in the UK, um, so there is not a lot of change. The, they reflect <coughs> less weight put on market definition, uh, a lot of weight put on competitive constraints, the test remains the same, it, it, the, so a, a merger will be prohibited if it, uh, if it results in a substantial lessening of competition. Uh, and uh, the approach to remedies is in principle the same, in practice perhaps a bit more lenient towards behavioral remedies. <coughs> 